did you? By uniting, uniting as one heart and soul coming together through this service. So we ask that you welcome each of them into our service. Amen. 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 All right, we will start with a song. Miss Marty, please lift oh. us up. Dolly, let's do with number 13, Kumbaya.
divide the three different parts. We have our healing portion, followed by the inspirational lecture, and then followed by demonstration of spiritual gifts. The first portion that we're going to move into is our healing portion. And for people, I do see a couple of new faces, so we're very excited to have you and welcome to each of you. Um, the way it works is we have different healers who will channel God's love and light to through each of you. And um, it's whatever you need. It could be a physical, it could be a mental, emotional, whatever you need is, is what the type of a healing that will come to you. Um, we have actually Helene will be one of our healers today, and she is a healing a healer in training. She's gone through all of her different classes. She's now working towards her certification. So if you receive a healing from her, um, I will go ahead and send uh, hand you a piece of paper. And if you notice something, then please go ahead and write that down so that she can get a letter of reference that she's doing a, a wonderful job, which we know she is. Um, Marty, we're going to ask you to be a healer today, so if our healers would please go forward and um, stand there. Uh, we are going to ask everyone to go over to the different chairs, and there's chairs lined up across the back to wait in line. If you're interested in getting a hands-on healing, you will hear a bell ring in the back when the healing chair is open, and I will go ahead and guide you through to that process. And um, we are very, very fortunate that Reverend Ashton will come forward now and she will uh, lead us in a guided meditation through this process and also read the prayer of spiritual healing. So um, please get prepared. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Turn, uh, turn to the back uh, page of your hymnal so we can say the prayer for spiritual healing together. I ask the great unseen healing force to remove all obstructions from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and power of God. Get into a comfortable position to sit where there is no tension on your physical body. Feet straight on the floor, palms up in your lap. Start the meditation. You may close your eyes. Take and feel deep breath. Inhale and exhale. With each exhale, let go if there is any if there is any tension in your physical body, if you have any aches or pain at this time. With your exhale, just breathe it out and let it go. Let go of the thoughts that are occupying your mind.
with each breath. Feel your body becoming more and more relaxed. And your mind quiet. No more chatting. No intrusion. that is flowing smoothly, relaxing your body, clearing your mind, and leading you to a peaceful and quiet space within you that feels serene. space within you that feels very peaceful and soothing. While you breathe in and breathe out, feel the peaceful sensations flowing along with your breath throughout your entire of what goes around in your life. Maintain this peacefulness. For it is your birthright. It is the divine presence within you. It is in this presence you sense wholeness. For it is in the silence and the quietness, you feel content, content with who you are. You are infinite, you are pure. Connecting with your higher self 
and in the presence of bright golden light. There are no thoughts in this state of consciousness. It is a pure state of being. Connect and become one. Breathe in and breathe out. that you've been through. They were all meant to happen for your highest to enable you to overcome. Overcome the barriers of your life and allow yourself to evolve and to continue your journey. As you view your life with a higher perspective, take a look at your life and the people that are surrounding you, family members, relatives, friends, neighbors. They are all in your life for a purpose. There are no accidents. Everything happens for a reason. Think of those who are in your surroundings. For each one of you, each one of them is presenting you with an opportunity a lesson, with an experience for your inner growth. Bless all those who came in and out of your life. For each one of those played their role in your life to advance, to succeed, and to continue. Continue your spiritual journey. Give thanks to 
for those experiences and the lessons that you have learned. For they shaped you to the person that you are today. Be thankful for who you are now and in the past. Be thankful for where you are at this time. The more you surrender to the will of God, the more you acknowledge this mighty presence, your higher self, that is working together closely for your betterment, for your advancement. God will not give you that which you cannot take. Have faith in yourself. And trust your inner guidance, the inner whisper, the voice of your Creator that is In this quietness, in this silence, always seeking your highest good and the highest good of all. In this silence, you hear the voice of your Creator with positive encourage affirmations. Surrender to your sacred mind, for it is the mind of God, working through your thoughts, through your intentions, through your decision making, your actions. Let thy will be done, God, in the highest most. Let thy will be done. As ever, so be it. Let thy will be done. yourself embraced with brilliant and bright golden light. That is nurturing your mind, your body, your spirit. See yourself standing in this brilliant light of God. And with the knowing that you are the light of God that never fails, 
You are the love of God that never ends. Wherever you are, whatever you do, just be the light that you are. Be the love that you are. Stand tall in your divinity and let your light shine bright. Let your light create a shift in the consciousness of humanity everywhere towards peace, love, unity, and harmony. Let go and let God. those elevated dimensions of your consciousness and trust your inner guidance exactly the way he anticipated it and so he's been going through a bit of a, a transformation and we all get faced with those from time to time but it is such a blessing to come back and he started this church five and a half years ago and he has an extensive knowledge and wisdom and spiritual walk that he chooses to travel each and every day and so it is such an honor to have him come before us and to share his wisdom with us. So please help me in welcoming Reverend Steve. things for about 15 minutes when we got here. It's uh, a bit of a finicky thing. <laughs> Very happy to be back up here today. Uh, Good to have you back. 
learning how to swim. You learn how to swim in a pool where you can touch the bottom and it's not that big a deal, it's not that scary any more than it has to be. If you want to learn how to swim a mile, then you got to go back for additional instruction, more education, more knowing of the medium you're trying to move across. If you learn the additional things, it's much easier to make that mile swim than it is with what you learn in the YMCA in a four foot deep pool. Spiritual laws are the same thing. They enhance your ability. They economize your efforts to get where you're going. They don't punish you if you break them. To learn them, to take them in as your own, teaches you how to step through your life the way God intended you to do it. Not the way I intended you to do it. Not the way spiritualism intends you to do it. But the way God intends you to do it. Spiritualism says, take these suggestions as you understand them, not as I understand them, not as your neighbor understands them, as you understand them and practice them in your life. And that's how God forms that personal experience with you to help you be better about your life, to get more comfort, to get a little bit of peace with your life. Within this, I would like to share a couple of things. I'm, a, I'm what they call a scientific spiritualist. I was an agnostic for a long time. Didn't really care if God was in my life or not. Pretty much bullied, bullied my way through life and created a lot of havoc for me and the people with me until I started learning a little more about these things. The, uh, one of the people that was very formative in the spiritualist movement was a man named Andrew Jackson Davis. What has become apparent to most spiritual investigators, whether they're Christian, whether they're spiritualist, whether they're just a human being trying to seek that spiritual guidance, is that vibration is all important. What you think, what you expose yourself to, what you read, what you hear on TV, all of that causes a vibration right within your mind and body that has an effect on how you deal with the world around you. It's like taking a tuning fork and striking it on the ground and holding it close to another tuning fork. That tuning fork will begin to sympathetically vibrate to that vibration. You are no different where you put yourself at, what you expose yourself to, has the same effect on you. These natural laws that I talk about help you when you're at a point where you don't understand what's going on. It gives you a constant to hold on to until the way clears. It gives you a truth and a trust that you can rely on until the way becomes apparent to you. Because sometimes things happen in life where they are not clear, where our mind and emotions begin to pour into them and begin to put all of this stuff in there. We have two basic parts of our mind and body. We have an instinctual mind and we have a spiritual mind. The instinctual mind seeks self-gratification. It seeks unquestionable security in your life. It also tells you when you're hungry. It also tells you when you're cold. So there's a balance there where it needs to be at. But left unchecked, it can cause you quite a bit of disruption in your life. The check for that is a spiritual culture that you think about, that you ingrain into your mind and body on a daily basis, that you remind yourself of on a daily basis, even if it doesn't seem to be working in front of you at the moment. It is a constant that will bear you through if you just stay with it until the way clears. The instincts don't like us to be quiet and take time. They want us to be in action. They want us to be doing something. They want us to be reacting to the world around us. Spiritual principles say be still and silent until you're sure of your path. 
Now there's a balance between these two. Because if you're about to get in a car wreck, you need to react. You can't wait. You have to have instincts of how to react. And that's what happened to me with this motorcycle wreck. I don't remember anything that happened to it, to me and all the people that were riding with me. Like I said, they're a lot faster than me. So they didn't realize I was missing until we hit the next crossroad. And they realized I wasn't with them, so they came back looking for me. But in the three catastrophic motorcycle wrecks I've been in since I was 15, it was instinct that caused me to survive. Knowing what to do without thinking about it. There is a place and a time for that. When you move into personal actions in your life, though, you have to have God with you. There has to be that higher consciousness there has to be a knowing of another choice. There's always a second choice about things. It's you who has to be still enough to hear it. As you listen to what I say, your mind is beginning to vibrate, as I said in the beginning. It's balancing against what you know with what I'm saying. You'll distill out of it something that's useful to you. This is not an ABC type system. It's not if you do steps one through five, you're going to get step six. It's a growth process every day, every moment of your life that you have to challenge yourself with. Most difficult things come from inside. Most things that need change are inside. They're not outside. Geographical changes don't work. Changes of the type of clothes you wear don't work. Interchange is what you have to work on. Interchange, inner decisions. That's where your happiness comes from because nobody can take it from you if it comes from inside. That's where your guidance comes from, from God, is within, not without. Some of the encouragements from Andrew Jackson Davis a way to have a spiritual culture in your life. In the morning, resolve to do nothing against, but everything for the kingdom of God and earth. This was written in the 1800s, so the language is a little different than you may hear it today. Happiness being the object, that every action during the day be preceded by well-conceived and well-developed thoughts as to tend to its attainment. Number three, at night retire at peace with yourself, at peace with the world. Draw these axioms into your soul. I know them to be the first steps towards happiness and culture. See well to this. It is the language of no theories, it is the voice of truth. The law and method of spiritual culture also require the following direction. Number one, be contented with the past and with all that it has brought you. Number two, be thankful for the present and all that you have. Number three, be patient for the future and for all its promises it will bring to you. And in order to facilitate this, you must do the following. Study the exact and physical sciences. Study the laws of the body and the laws of nature. Proper gratification to the external senses. Now see, that's where I got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> They're not talking about drinking to an excess or using drugs to an excess or any of the other things you can do with sexual gratification. They're talking about eating, exercise, sleeping, those kinds of things. Walking, playing, dancing, and various amusements. Reading, writing, essays, keeping journals in association with good and ornamentally educated minds. <coughs> in all things, practice self-discipline and obeying the principle of wisdom. First, studying the sciences, I mean those particular sciences which relate to the organization, the science of anatomy, physiology, chemistry, and reproduction. 
Second, by studying the physical and mental laws as intended the principles of motion, physiological function, measurements of power. In other words, don't try to pick up 400 pounds if you can only pick up 50. Third, by proper gratification of the senses, it is intended whatever the preceding sciences and principles will teach and permit as the essentials to health and cultivation. Something that I read in the beginning about being kind, being helpful, being hopeful, a lot of times we find reasons why not to do that. And there are times when you have to temper those things. You have to be conscious and you have to be responsible with what you do to yourself. If I think that I've accomplished not drinking, I don't go sit in the bar and have them set drinks up on the bar to see if I can resist drinking. That's not responsible. You have to act in a fashion to realize that God has a plan for everyone else. You should aid God's plan for unfolding with those people if you're going to be interacting with them, not your plan for that person. And that's hardest with children. I've been going through a, a time with uh, a couple of my children. And when I finally stopped trying to do what I thought should be done, God's plan started presenting itself for them. And it was much more than I could have ever planned. So have faith that God's working with not just you, but everyone around you. Try to see how you can aid that if you're going to work with people. Don't give them your perception of spirituality. Don't give them your perception of life. Ask what God wants you to do with this person. Not what I want to do, not what my training tells me to do. Take a moment to make that connection and see what happens. I do that every time I do a mediumistic reading or a healing. I bring God's Spirit into it. Everyone can do that. You know, Judy said that I've got a lot of knowledge. Well, it's been pretty rough getting some of that knowledge. It's getting beat up and knocked down and standing it up and making sense out of it. You don't have to get as beat up as somebody else to be a spiritualist. I mean, you just got to pay attention earlier than they did. And this last round here with this motorcycle wreck, you know, I could have taken it pretty hard. And I could have, oh, why is this happening to me? You know, but it was a time out for me. The only way that I would have taken this time out to look at my life, to look at where the, what's been going on with what I've been doing, instead of just constantly doing, 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 I've had to sit and think, sit and look retrospection, introspection, not blame what happened with the motorcycle wreck. The benefit of it is this time out. I have a real high key job that occupies a lot of my time. I manage $200 million worth of improvements to the Utilities Commission every year. And it's a very high key, high demanding job. They've called me once a week and asked me how I'm doing. They haven't asked me about any other jobs or projects. It's funny, one of my friends said, well, why don't you play the amnesia trip? Who's this? <laughs> yeah, I like that. But, you know, in all honesty, that's what's happened. I've been taken off the carousel of life and put on the side to have that retrospection. It happened to me before when I was incarcerated for a number of years. That had a profound shift in my life. This has had a profound shift in my life and what I want to do and where I want to go. Or it's recommitted me to that. Doing things all the time just gets repetitive and you lose the spirit of what you're doing. There was a guy, there was a couple named Walter and Leah Russell who wrote a lot of books who started a big spiritual organization that's now non-existent anymore. His philosophy was, whenever you encounter a person or an object, there's always been a creative thought that brought that person into being, or that, that object into being. 
that creative thought is of God. You think of that thought and you think of that creative power and let that try to move you. The same person developed, he couldn't even hardly sculpt, but he did, invented a number of sculpting techniques that are used today through spiritual inspiration. He invented this trick, this, this art, that the deeper you carve the eyes, the different the color they look when you look at the statue. He also wanted somebody to carve all of Mark Twain's characters for him because he was a Mark Twain fan. Couldn't find anybody to do it, so he did it himself. When they took all the heads and put them on a musical score that played the most balanced musical melody known of that era. All of these things that we are capable of in some fashion in our own life. Tune into God first. Feel that presence and allow yourself to be guided. But most importantly, don't be bound by the past, whether it's yesterday, five years ago, ten years ago. Don't be bound by the past. Take each day as a new opportunity. I remember when I was in AA, very active. There was this one girl that used to be at, and AA, you come in for the first time, you get a white chip as the first day of sobriety. She would come in every Saturday morning to the meeting and get a new white chip. And this happened all the She's a nice looking girl, you know, seemed pretty intelligent. And this went on for over a year. And I moved away from the area, and, and, and about two years later, I had a chance to be back in that area, so I went to the Saturday morning meeting. She was getting her one-year chip of sobriety. So she came back, came back, came back, tried, 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 and finally found what it was that made it work. Wasn't bound by all her failures, didn't give up because of all of her failures. Kept coming back until it finally worked. And that's what it means. Don't forget the past, but don't be bound by it. Each day is new for us. Each day is, is a new gift to us. I'm going to get ready to close now. I'd like to read something. I am a spiritualist. This is not a spiritualist church, but I am a spiritualist myself, and I use the principles to guide my life. The reason that the sunflower is part of spiritual represents spiritualism is as follows. With the sunflower, it's native to our soil and transplanted to many others. Spiritualism is the same way. It's native to America and it's been transplanted to many other nations. A strong stalk holds a heavy blossom with the spirit with the sunflower. A strong philosophy teaching man is happening his happiness here and hereafter depends upon the building of a strong stock of character to support the person the sunflower protects weak plants from surrounding elements spiritualism protects mankind from superstition and ignorance it has a, the sunflower has a medicinal value the sunflower has all vitamins and minerals contained within its seeds Spiritualism has a medicinal value that provides spiritual and physical healing through proper balances. The sunflower is magnetic and it attracts all insects without exception to its special nectar. Spiritualism is magnetic. It attracts all people searching for truth, especially those unhappy with dogma and creed. Spiritual, the sunflower grows in poor soil. Spiritualism grows in poor soil. As the sunflower turns its face to the light of the sun, so let spiritualism turn the face of humanity to the light of truth. Thank you for listening.